be snoring. He was happy to do his mitzvahs. And what we'll try, we'll pray to Hashem, Hashem will send us what we need. But it turns out his daughter was already in the parsha of Shaduchim. And when a person's daughter is in the age of, of marriage, he's supposed to be trying to get some wealth, some money, so that he could show the girl that she has nice clothes and people will be interested in writing her a shidduch. And then when she gets married, he should give the chatan a beautiful dowry. That's called a nedunya. That allows him to sit and learn without worrying about parnasa for a few years. That's done in many yeshiva circles. That when a girl gets married, her father promises to give the chatan, the chasin, some support, some money, some means, that this way he doesn't have to right away worry about getting a job. He has time to learn. Taira, that's what we call today the Kailo system. Many times people can stay in Kailo because they have a Shvir who's Moser Nefesh, who sacrifices to give him every month some money that this way he can learn Taira. It turns out, the Rosh did not have money. And now his daughter was ready to, to get married. But Rav Zusha did not have a penny in his pocket. How would he be able to find a good chassan? You know, sometimes if the chassan is a Tam Chacham, he expects a serious support. You want to get a good boy for your daughter. It's like bribing him to marry your daughter. <laughs> you give him a nice check. And that's how sometimes rich people get a great shidduch. They get such a Tam Chacham because they promise to support him. Okay. It turns out, Rav Zusha wasn't worried. Why should I worry? I have a tat in Himmel who cares about me. And Ibn Zusha, at that time, was called to his Rebbe. His Rebbe, I don't know his Rebbe's name, but his Rebbe used to care about him. And his Rebbe knew that, hey, Ibn is going to need some money to marry off his daughter. So he called Ibn Zusha, and Ibn Zusha came to his Rebbe. It's a, great, it's a great mitzvah to visit your Rebbe, by the way. It's brought down, you're supposed to visit your Rebbe on Yamim Taivim. Some say you're supposed to visit your Rebbe even on Shabbos, and some say even on Rosh Chodesh. But why is that? So I saw on the Sefer Ein Yaakov, he says, because when we had the Beis HaMikdash, you went to the Beis HaMikdash three times a year, and you saw the Shekhinah, you saw Hashem's divine presence. Nowadays we don't have the Beis HaMikdash. So where are you going to see the divine presence? When you go to your Rebbe, your Rebbe has the Shekhinah. Now Hashem's presence is with your Rebbe. He went to his Rebbe, and he was so happy, and his Rebbe says to him, Rebbe Zusha, I'm giving you an envelope filled with cash. And he gave him a whole bag filled with money. And he said, in here is 300 ruble. Rabbi said, that's a fortune. They say a ruble was enough to live on for a whole month. So 300 ruble, that's uh, about support for almost 10 years. That's a good uh, dowry. It turns out, Rav Zusha thanked his Rebbe so much. And his Rebbe says, Rav Zusha, I know you have faith in Hashem, but I was worried that you wouldn't have money in the pocket, so I'm giving you now this income. Thank you, Rebbe. Thank you so much. It turns out, as he leaves, his Rebbe says, please give the, 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 the bag of money to your wife. She'll take care of it to, to, to help the, the girl to get married. As he was leaving, he took his stick and his bag and with him the 300 ruble and he headed home. It was a long journey home and he had to stop at many inns and many hotels, whatever, places to sleep. And in one place he heard screaming and shouting and crying and wailing and yelling. He didn't know what happened over here. He thought maybe there was a war. And he said, is everything okay in the city? What's happening? And they said, you didn't hear the news? There's a lady that's a widow that was supposed to marry off her daughter this week. But you know what happened? She promised the chassan 300 ruble. And it was stolen. She hid the money in a special place. Oh, she's crying. And the chassan, he has a little chutzpah. He said he doesn't want to get married to this family unless they come up with what they promised him. The 300 ruble dowry. And Zisha thinks to himself, what a mitzvah. If I give my 300 ruble to this widow, 
so that she can marry off her daughter, that'll be a big stucca. And then I'll stop her from crying. Wow. A mitzvah like this doesn't come every day, especially I happen to have 300 ruble. That's Ashkocha Pratis. Hmm. He goes over to the crowd and he sees the widow crying and the cow is crying. And he says, What's happening? And they said, Well, well the, ch- the chasin is supposed to be now. And, and, and the musicians are here, and the baker's baked, and the cook's cooked, but, but they have no money to give the chasin. So he's about to leave. And as the chasin started to walk away from the chasinah, the, the mother of the kala fainted. Then the kala saw her mother faint, and she fainted. And then the aunt saw that the kala fainted, and then she fainted. I don't know if it really means in the story that they fainted, but it means they, they passed out like, oh, they collapsed. So quickly people said, catch the robber! Everybody search for the robber! If we find the money, we'll still be able to save the wedding day! And it won't be such a, such a tragedy, such an embarrassment for the family that they can't even give the cousin some money. And this way I'll get married. The physician knew I better act quick. He says, shh, 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 I found it. Everyone was shocked. Please put away your candy. They were shocked. He found it? Who's this stranger? They didn't even know who he was. They said, maybe he's a Leo Hanavi. <laughs> Leo Hanavi has been known throughout the generations to save Jews from terrible calamities. People said, maybe it's a Leo Hanavi. came to drop off some money. And he says, shh, shh, I found the money. But wait. Um, I want to speak to the mother. And when the band heard that the money was found, they started playing, oh, and everyone started coming back. Even the chassan started walking back. So happy. And the kala, she was so revived. Wow. My happiest day in my life, my marriage, almost turned into the saddest day in my life. What could be a bigger nightmare? Then, then a, a, a chasana being cancelled? <clears throat> so, Reb Zusha said, wait, before I give the money, I have to hear a simon. It says in Mesech the Baba Mitzi and Elu Mitzis that if you find something, you should ask the person for a simon. I need to know a simon. How much money, um, how, much, how many hundred dollar bills were there? How many fifties? How many twenties? How many singles? I want to know if the money I found is exactly the same amount that you lost. So the mother started saying, yes, yes, I remember how many big checks there were and how many little bills. And he's writing it down. And he says, I'll check. I'm going to go check. I'll go now and come back. As he goes, he's getting the money. And all of a sudden, he was attacked by the Yetzir Hara. The Yetzahara is inside of each person. And the Yetzahara says, Zusha, you are the greatest in the world. Zusha, you are the best. Zusha, you are number one. Zusha, you, no one is as great as you. And Zusha started recognizing that voice. He said, the Yetzahara wants me to come to Gaiva. He wants me to, to become arrogant. He wants me to think I'm better than everyone else. Woo! I don't want the Yetzirah making me have Gaiva. My whole life I run away from COVID. So, he walks into the circle and he has the bag of money and he's not sure what to do. And all the people are singing for him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ay, 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 ay. They're making so dance around him. And he realizes I'm getting too much COVID. Nope. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush the Yitzhahara right now. Okay, I'm giving the money, but I want condition. Condition. I want twenty-five rubles as a gift, as a tip, because I went through the trouble of getting the mitzvah and bringing the aveda here. So pay me. People were like shocked. What Meshuggahner asks for money when he does a Shavas Aveda? Imagine you find someone's baseball glove and you tell him, listen, I found your mitt. I'll go get it for you. I'll meet you back here. I want to see. 
uh, Sunday ice cream, Sunday two scoops, vanilla ice cream with chocolate fudge. Is it a deal? How do you make a deal? The Torah says you Haitian is a Aveda. You have to return something that you found. Pazusha on purpose said, I, I'm entitled to 25 ruble. If you give me the 25 ruble, you pay me cash, then I'll give you back the Aveda. The people said, this is the man we thought was Elio Hanavi. He's a swindler. He's a crook. He's a ganiv. He's a bum. He wants to take the money. And each time they insulted him, he was getting more and more embarrassed. And the more embarrassed he felt, the more he knew the Yitzhara won't be able to make me a Balgaiva. He won't be able to tell me that I'm so great. Because look at everybody else. They're telling me how bad I am. How terrible. How rude. How, how selfish. Hmm. So now the Yitzhara was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then... The people said, just give her the money already. You're stopping the wedding. And he says, no, no. I insist I get my 25 ruble. They said, listen, if you want one ruble, maybe. But 25 ruble, you're crazy. I want my 25 ruble. They were ready to beat him up. So suddenly, someone said, wait. Why don't we go to the rabbi? Let's ask the rabbi. So Zish said, okay. After they finished pulling him by his coat, uh, well, let's go to the rabbi. They go to the rabbi, and they say, Rabbi, this guy wants 25 ruble to return an Aveda. It doesn't say anywhere in Elam that when you find something, you could charge. Maybe there's a mission you're going to learn about that says if I take off from work, I could ask you to at least to pay me for the missing work when I came to return the Aveda. But not 25 ruble? The Rav listens to the case, and he says, okay, 100%, you have to give the money, 300 ruble, and you are entitled to nothing. You're not allowed to charge for doing a mitzvah. Hashem gave you a mitzvah, you found the Aveda, there's nothing to talk about. Give her the entire sum. Okay. Rabbi, if you say so, here's the money. And people took it from him, and the person that took it spit at him. You. <clears throat> Inside, he needed that spit because otherwise he would have become a Valgaiva. And a Gaiva is not a good meter. So now he got the spit uh, that towards him and everyone making fun of him. Now he had no more glory. No more COVID, man. And they danced at the wedding and it was Freilich and even Reb Zusha was with Samech, the chassan and Kala, with his dancing and his twirling and his singing and his jumping and standing on his head. You know, some people, they can stand on the head and they put their feet up in the air and they look upside down. And then for a minute you wonder, who's upside down? Is he upside down or maybe I'm upside down? Oh, he's upside down. And then he left. Shortly after the chassanah, as Reb Zusha headed home, I don't know what happened with his own daughter and his wife, I don't know how he told his wife that I just gave away all the chasana money. I hope uh, there was no problem with Shalom Bias there. And I'm sure Hashem sent him a Yeshua another way. Hashem has many ways to save a person from his troubles, especially for those who serve him faithfully and loyally. And guess what happened? Tyra Kindelach, listen what happened. The Zisha's Rebbe is traveling to that town. And someone says, Rebbe, oh, Please, come meet our Rav. And he comes to meet the Rav, because sometimes when one Rav travels to another city, he goes to meet the Rav of the city. It's a polite way of giving him respect. So in every city, there's someone who's called the Mara de Asra. He's the head rabbi of the city. So they came, they introduced the two. And as they were talking, the, Rebbe said, the Rav said, Do you have a Talmud of Zusha? He says, Yes, Rav Zusha, Tzadik. Do you know what he did recently? What did he do? He found a three hundred dollar uh, package of money, a three hundred ruble uh, that was lost by a widow, and he insisted that she pay him twenty five ruble to, for him to return the the money. Is this the kind of student you trained? That he's selfish? That he doesn't even want to do a mitzvah unless you pay him? The rabbi realized that's not Zusha. Then he realized, oh boy, I have. He gave the 300 ruble that I gave him to marry off his own daughter. 
and he was mekayim v'ahavta l'recha kamoicha. He cared about someone else.